This here is the new Nissan Aria and I can already tell you so far it is a huge game changer for Nissan as a brand. It will shake up also the differences between let's say a normal volume brand and a premium brand but can it be a game changer for the whole EV market? We'll find out together with Thomas and Autogefühl for you. Here in the front the Nissan Aria shows this closed EV front grille a Japanese styling pattern here a little bit hidden behind with slim daytime running lights and also full LED lamps. This is here the dark blue color. We also have a dark green color for you and a copper color. These are the colors we have seen so far but of course there will be more of that. It is a compact SUV or crossover as you want to take it and the interesting thing with Nissan is they have dominated the EV market with the Nissan Leaf in the very early stages. Then came Tesla, then came all the other manufacturers can they now strike back with the Aria? Well, it might have a big chance for that. Why? Let's take a closer look here. 19 inch wheels. These are the ones with the aerodynamic design. More balloonish tires definitely, but better riding comfort. However, you can also get 20 inch wheels if you want a, you know, just more prominent styling. Then you can see here the wheel arches are painted in black so this also gives a sporty look and then there's a very very sleek side profile right here look at that so more a crossover look and they've put the batteries in the lower end of the vehicle we can also say, see a cutaway model there and they have two battery sizes either 63 kilowatt hours net or 87 kilowatt hours net. We have the one with the small battery here today but at a late stage we'll also drive the bigger battery. Subscribe if you haven't done so far and the range will be very interesting. I can promise you that already right now. Towards the rear we can see there are interesting design lines and the overall length is 4 meters 60 that is 181 inches. As for the rear design, modern and sleek, light strip here going all the way across the vehicle. And on the technology side, it's very interesting. You have the front-wheel drive model, you have the all-wheel drive model, then with the two electric motors. And the acceleration difference is 7.5 seconds to 6 seconds for the all-wheel drive model, 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles. They plan to do an even quicker performance model but that is actually pushed away for now because they say there wouldn't be a huge demand for that. And top speed is also a difference. The front wheel drive model 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour or then the all-wheel drive model 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. As for suspension there's one base suspension that are going all across all models. No adaptive suspension However, there's a multi-link rear axle and that is a more elaborate rear axle. Let's see in the driving part how it plays out as for comfort. And recharging here, what is kind of very special for this mid-size segment here, you will have a 22 kilowatt three-phase charging for AC, that's great, and 130 kilowatt DC charging, but with a good charging curve, we can also show that charging curve and that means that from 10 to 80 percent state of charge the big battery you'll charge in about 35 minutes. Should you wonder about the trunk? No there is none. Just equipment here underneath, fluids and so on. So no trunk whatsoever. And should you wonder about the name by the way, Aria, the thing is it's supposed to be you know derived from you know Sanskrit word of like noble and the problem is for a German market when you say Aria in German that's the exact pronunciation of Arian and that is of course another good combination for a car on the German market hmm. so the Germans then in their market try to say rather Aria so it's differently pronounced and there's no you know mismatching with that but overall I think as for a name pick Maybe not the best idea if it in some way can be, you know, connoted to Arian. So, yeah, what do you think about it? Moving towards the interior, that key fob is slim and light and high quality and no high gloss piano lacquer. Awesome. Then, door closing sound. Very good. Low frequency, sonorous. I really like that. And look at that, the interior materials here at the doors. This is then the Alcantara equipment, the microfiber equipment. You have it here at the inside of the doors, either here like this in bright or in plain black is also available. Soft touch above that, 
like here good quality as well then this is a little bit harder then here you have a soft leather red again and also the quality of the buttons right here everything is really nice and even more so look at that when i lower the window now a little bit for the front and the rear this is here a dual insulation glass in the front but even at the rear doors and then look at this lounge interior it looks really amazing doesn't it again you can also have this seat here in complete black and also with a black microfiber here then with a beautiful beige or bright or maybe ivory color microfiber what what, do, what would you call it leatherette outside so the seat is animal free and i think a beautiful combination blue exterior and this bright interior that is really amazing so this would be my favorite setup the screens two times 12.3 inch more than horizontal setup are they of any use we'll find out very soon seating position higher than you might expect from the outside looks actually so it might look like a crossover from the outside but seating position here so electric controls seating position wise it's more an suv indeed and for me with one meters 89 or six foot two there's just some headroom left and this panoramic roof here and also the head-up display is actually standard for all models except the very base model and the interesting thing is here this is a panoramic roof with a shade that's better for example than uh, with the teslas where it gets really really hot and you can also open that so most of these modern evs they have fixed panoramic roofs and maybe sometimes even not a cover and here they have both you can open it and you do have a cover and it's actually quite substantial that opening as well so yeah that's really nice that they have that and it feels very elaborated so far comfortable seating we'll see how it turns out while driving this by the way also equipped here with the optional bose sound system and why don't we test the sound directly right here right now let's see about that so isn't it hmm wow that's a great surround sound right so i can really say this is a premium vehicle and it does compete with the audi beam and mercedes no doubt look at this lower middle console it will have a special actually two special features coming up very soon here first of all this is the shifting lever drive mode reverse park and then here is like this matte wood really nice and then adaptive cup holders then you have these capacitive buttons but at least not on high gloss black so for the driving modes for the e-pedal how this will affect driving we'll soon see and this is one of the special features soon coming and then soft touch leather right here for the armrest lifting it up yeah it's actually well attached and then is this uh, inductive charging pad right here another storage area and now comes the first special feature because we can actually move this whole middle console we can move it backwards to have a little bit more space in the front if it's that useful i don't know <laughs> it's a cool feature and it reveals here in the front that we have a connector box usb a usb c either wired or wireless connector for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto you can choose that actually but most of the time that you can control these things better you will probably move it forward again yeah would you actually use or would you have it in the backward position tell me in the comments actually and then there's this you know second control so they do give you some haptic feedback when you press them and when you press open here look at that what, what happens then there we have another <laughs> why would you do that electric I don't know but and you can also even hold it in between like this that's funny isn't it and then there's a manual opening of this one or you just leave it open like this and you can always you know put it back and out again this is maybe showing off to your friends or, or so um yeah what would you put in there and here the contrast electric versus manual opening this middle one then the classic glove box I think that's just better when you have the simple and plain manual control because here your knees touch it then right and left and then you have to close it first and that takes a while and so on and yeah not the ideal solution I think this is just easier and also when you think about you know maybe you're closing it and you're not watching and maybe like you know someone on the passenger side maybe the kids play around with that and then they hold this and it's like ah, 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 ah. 
Ah, ah. <sighs> yeah, that's not that pleasant indeed. Uh, it does not really stop. Um, so, uh, yeah, you might say, oh, that's a dumb thing to do, the dumb thing uh, to, to, to test here actually, but you remember when, you know, when someone has kids, this will happen at some point. And so, um, yeah, not a fan of, it looks cool, but not a fan of the electric solution here. Interior overview, two times 12.3 inch, horizontal stress, zoom on deals to the screens. Here, once again, the soft touch microfiber, beautiful and bright, would be then again black in the black styling. And then the copper accentuation here goes all the way horizontal, also here with these air vents. And they thought about a manual volume jog, that's great to have, and also for muting like this, that's good. The, the climate controls are capacitive, yes, they do give some kind of feedback, but the beautiful matte wood area here, this is very, very cool. So, um, yes, I don't like capacitive BS buttons, hashtag capacitive BS, however, the integration is pretty cool, you know, and when you shut down the vehicle like this, it goes kind of almost invisible, and then when you start up the vehicle here, they are backlit, so it is beautifully done, no doubt about that. Steering wheel has electric control in and out, and also up and down. Here is a well-equipped vehicle, and the strange thing is, it goes extremely high, higher than anyone would need it to, but it doesn't go that low. So for me, it shouldn't go that high, but it should go a little bit lower actually, but that way it's still fine. And on the steering wheel, it's a mix of um, capacitive buttons and real jogs, for example. So overall, actually fine also to control the digital instruments and stuff. You can change the view. You can have a bigger digital speed view in there. Or you can then, for example, have some information like this. You can also have the GPS or even the map then right here in. But here, sadly, when I activate the Apple CarPlay map, then the GPS view here and the instruments just disappears basically. Head-up display, also standard for most model trims and also with some basic GPS guidance. The screen here with the CarPlay integration or then also Android Auto if you're using the Android phones. And you can always dim the screen here with a hotkey and then you can also um, go plus minus, change the brightness of that and always have a hotkey here for the camera system. The resolution could be a little bit better. There's this fake drone view from above. The main menu looks like this. That one doesn't look that modern actually, so it could look more modern. Um, the responsiveness is better than we know so far. We are around the Stockholm area today, so best greetings to all our Swedish fans. Yeah, most of the time you will probably use Android Auto or um, or the Apple CarPlay. They say, by the way, they have a dynamic route planning also for the charging stations, by the way, but it does not do the preheating. You either have to floor it out then or do the preheating manually, actually. However, the infotainment system overall, I think, could be a little bit more modern from its looks, but I think you'll get along and most of us are using Apple CarPlay and an auto in, in our vehicles anyway, nowadays. And hidden here in that lower corner, really nice luxury features, heated steering wheel or automatic function. The same also goes automatic function for the heated and cooled seats or then manual in three levels. And that's such a rare combination here. Microfiber seats in combination with cooling, awesome, ready for summer. The back mirror is either classic or digital like this. In this case, it might make sense because the view to the rear is not the best where the normal mirror, here you actually do see better. Look at that rear area, especially even more beautiful in that bright microfiber styling. And um, let me first show you here, when I'm behind the driver's seat here, ample of legroom, that's awesome. And an interesting fabric-alike cover of the rear seat. This is such a premium material use and animal free, besides the steering wheel, it's really awesome. Then they're using the EV platform, there's no middle tunnel whatsoever. Also real buttons here for the seat heating in the rear, USB-C, USB-A charger, then the matte wood. 
this is one of the best EV interiors I've seen so far from all EVs actually. So I'm really amazed by that. Headroom wise, it works. It's not the highest vehicle, but it definitely works for four, even for five. Yeah, it works for five tall adults. Maybe not the most ample headroom than in the rear, but it does work for five tall adults indeed. An isofix at the outside seats each. It's a comfortable seating position and once again also great material quality is also with this perforation that it's more breathable and here in the middle part you can fold down the armrest and these cup holes are not adaptive but they're quite deep so they should hold most bottles actually tight so I'm very impressed by this interior. Trunk or boot area, 470 liters for the front wheel drive, 415 for the all-wheel drive, that is 17 versus 15 cubic feet. The width here, easily, a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches even, so that's actually quite good. The length, a little bit less than that, 95 centimeters or, let's see it right here, around 37 inches. The height here is about 65 centimeters or 26 inches, unless you use a little bit more of that lower space here. You could store a cable right here. You can put this one here upright as a splitter, but you can also have cables here right and also on the left side. So they thought about enough space for different charging cables even. You do fold the seats from the rear seating area actually. There's no possibility to do it from the trunk, but the overall length in here, maximum length is one uh, about 180 or 70, 71 inches. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Nissan Aria. And here we go to the sports mode and show you a first acceleration with the front wheel drive model. Let's go. Oh, that was a zero to 80 kilometers an hour. Yeah, it was substantially quick. You maybe heard it also. I had some wheel spin in the front and that is the thing then with the front wheel drive model. That can happen although it was dry now. So much power here with the electric vehicles and when you're just with the front axle. Yeah, actually then with the electric vehicles the rear wheel drive is to me actually better because car accelerates, the weight shifts to the back and also for the turning circle rear wheel drive is usually better. Well, but you can also get the all-wheel drive model and then it's also 1.5 seconds quicker in the acceleration figure and you can also use torque vectoring so it will have more agility than also in the corners. The steering itself, it is pretty light here in this low degree angles actually and then it gets a little bit harder to the sides. So overall not too bad and gives you also a good feeling of the vehicle. The driving modes, here in the sports mode you have more throttle input. In the standard mode it's a little bit drawn back. And in the eco mode then the throttle pedal is reduced. As for the intake it won't make the biggest difference. And when you use the pin down it always goes fast. But of course you could switch it a little bit. Most of the time probably people will stay in the standard mode anyway. First impression, a likable driving situation. You have a nice panoramic front windscreen. They are using for the heated windscreens these fine heating lines. Mm, to me that's not the best actually. I rather prefer these heating foils. Some don't see these heating lines. I always see it and to me it's terribly annoying. Some agree, some say, ah, I don't see it anyway. What about you? Tell me in the comments. Um, not sure if you can also get it without heated windscreen. But most Swedes, of course, will actually go for the heated windscreen. Definitely makes sense. Controlling the car while driving here with the heated uh, heating control. It is okay, you know, it's okay, but still a turning dial would be better. It looks awesome, definitely it feels great, but not the best solution. Um, you don't have to press it that hard. But controlling it while driving, it's, you know, you, you also don't know like oh, what am I hitting and where am I hitting it. So you tend to look at it. And the moment you look at it, it's of course always a little bit distracting. Yeah, here we go. So, 
steering feel, by the way, also switches from the driving mode. Standard mode is really light. And in the sport mode, it gives you a little bit more feedback, so you can also adjust it by that, actually. As for suspension, you remember we have one standard suspension and the Multilink rear axle. So far, so good. When we had some bumps in the road, it was no problem, actually. Especially here with the 19-inch wheels, we have some more dampening from the tire. So when you go for the 20-inch wheels, you will lose some comfort but you gain visuals, right? So yes, the car does look better with 20 inch, definitely. I was at first skeptical in the way of, yeah, we didn't hear from Nissan for, for some time. Yeah, there was the new Qashqai, of course. Qashqai is always a, a very relevant car, yes. Then there was the new Juke at some point, but there, you know, there wasn't much fuss about um, you know about, about Nissan and now they're back with the Aria here and yeah they are really back indeed so really stepping up the level from the Leaf and they have a very serious competitor here and if you think about the main competitors VW ID4, Tesla Model Y, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Volvo XC40 or, or C40 a little bit smaller of course, Ionic 5, Kia EV6, so Skoda Enyaq, Audi Q4 e-tron, and there are so many competitors of this one here, and they're all somewhat in the same segment, somewhat in the same pricing, power, battery. Here they have a little bit bigger battery than the competition, and indeed that pays off, and they also move this car towards the premium segment indeed, with all the materials and, you know, stuff here with the microfiber really stepping up the game the execution interior look and feel is really really nice user interface at least we have also the manual volume knob and so on and we have these backlit uh, capacitive buttons that's also better than most of the competitors and also the driving feeling is both comfortable and sporty so in no way would it be behind the competitors and in a lot of ways even be you know in front of them so far in this segment here, my favorites were the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Kia EV6, and the Ionic 5, of course, together along with that, but I found the EV6 a little bit better, and I really like the Volvo XC40 or C40. Only thing is that their range is a little bit behind the competition. And this Nissan Aria here can easily match that. Um, so I can already tell you right now, from driving also now, this can sure be one of the top picks in that, let's say at this moment, rather standard EV segment. Of course, it comes at the cost of that the Nissan Ara is not a cheap Nissan, not a very affordable Nissan. It more has the same price than also the premium competition, but the price, especially if you compare the competitors there, as I just um, mentioned, is indeed justified. So that's perfectly fine well we did have some downhill but then we also went uphill again but look at that 13 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers that's 20 kilowatt hours on 100 miles that's sensational super efficient okay ideal conditions best temperatures for the batteries very low speed limits smooth driving constant speed maybe a little bit of topography change here and there so most ideal situations for a good energy consumption. However, still, this is so efficient. At this moment here, under these ideal conditions, this would be more than 450 kilometers or almost 300 miles for the small battery. And for the big battery, the same consumption would even mean that you can actually score some 400 miles or more than 650 kilometers. That's one of the best results ever for an electric vehicle. And now you will check out the big comparison EV episode or also one of the main competitors, the Kia EV6 directly.